Thanks to Brilliant for helping support this episode. Hey crazies, Em and I occasionally play this dice game called Farkle. You roll a bunch of six-sided dice and different rolls give you different scores. You know, it's a dice game. But the scores for the various rolls don't seem to line up with their likelihood. We've gotten six of a kind several times, but neither one of us has ever gotten a straight. Yet six of a kind is worth twice as much. Is our evidence just anecdotal or is the one through six straight actually less likely? And if it is less likely, maybe we can fix the scoring. This episode was made possible by the generous support of our patrons and YouTube members. All right, I, I suppose I should explain the rules of the game real quick. If you already know them, feel free to jump to this time code right here. In Farkle, you start with six, six-sided dice. Technically, the game came with these dice, but we're gonna be doing enough counting today, I didn't think we needed to also count pips. So I swapped out the dice with ones with numbers. Anyway, you roll and keep as many of the scoring dice as you'd like. These are all the possible ways you can score. The next step is what makes this game interesting. Once you've selected your scoring dice, you can roll the remaining dice again, if you want. It's a gamble though. If you get more scoring dice, you can keep those too. They go in a separate group from the first roll though. You don't get to count them all together. You can even repeat and roll the remaining dice again. But if your roll doesn't get any scoring dice, that's called a farkle and it voids all your previous rolls from that round. You get zero points. It's pretty simple, and, and it's one of the few games that Em and I can actually play in the morning during breakfast. Waking up is hard. Looking at all the scoring rolls, we can see there's already some obvious problems. A triplet is equally likely regardless of the number, yet they're all worth a different number of points. So we already know we're gonna have to adjust the scoring at least a little. For a proper adjustment, we'll need to know the probabilities of all the possible rolls. And here they are. Huh. Yo, what's the holdup? I, I, I'm working on it, but there are 46,656 possible rolls on six dice alone. Okay, okay, just, just send it over when you have it. It's fine, we'll get through this together. Wait a minute, 46,000 possible rolls? That can't be right. Six dice with six possible states each. Whoa, I guess he's right. Uh, maybe we'll start with one six-sided die and, and work our way up. The only way to score with one die is to roll a one or a five. Since there are only six possible outcomes, each of them will only have a one in six chance of happening. With two dice, there are six to the two or 36 possible outcomes, which seems easy enough to count manually. Just set up a six by six matrix where the rows represent one of the dice and the columns represent the other. There's only one way to get two ones, one way to get two fives, two ways to get a one and a five, eight ways to get a single one, and eight ways to get a single five. The rest of the rolls are farkles, which is a huge chunk of the rolls it is very likely for you to farkle if you only have two dice left to roll. <sighs> Unfortunately, this method isn't gonna scale very well. Three dice would be a six by six by six matrix. How would you even use this thing to count? I don't wanna sit and calculate it all. That's what stats clone is for. Let's make a computer do this for us. It's time for some Python. We'll include some text labels, define what the dice look like, and let it know what can score and what can't. It doesn't matter which die rolls what, so we'll need to include all the scoring permutations. Then we just need it to output the results. Yep, that ought to do it. And go! We've got all the possible rolls in a list. The total number of possible rolls looks good. Here's all the scoring rolls and how often they occur. And there are 16 ways to farkle. That all matches our matrix method, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. What about three dice? That should be easy enough. We're gonna use the same code as before and just add an extra die. Actually, now that I'm thinking about this, let's sort the arrays in numerical order. That way, when we get down to the scoring conditions, we don't have to think of every permutation. And go. It says here there's 216 possible rolls, which is six to the three, so that checks out. The rest of the counts for the scoring rolls look reasonable, and there are 60 ways to farkle. 
What about four dice? Let's do it. You know, I should be able to scale this up better with some recursion. We'll just define a function that calls itself and go. Well, crap. Okay, never mind. Back to our original code, add a fourth die, and wow, this, this, this is a lot of scoring rules. Let's be strategic with our if-then conditions and, and just count similar elements. And go. Ooh, I needed a little time to think about that one. Anyway, we've got counts that all look reasonable. There are four extra ways to get a triple one than a triple two because it didn't get counted up here. The same goes for triple fives. They didn't get counted here. A single one is just as likely as a single five. I think we're good. What about- Yes, yes, we can do five dice. Add a die to the code. Add a few extra scoring possibilities, and go. Holy moly, that's a lot of possible rolls. Whew, this is getting tough. Six dice, and go. Go, and go. Well, this is taking a while. Okay, there we go, I was getting worried. Suppose I don't know if any of these have been miscounted. I got them finished. Wow, that's some great timing. Thanks, you're welcome. Ooh, a spreadsheet. Wow, nice. Thanks, you're gonna show my binomial coefficients, right? Well, I suppose that's only fair. Oh, okay. I'm super excited about this spreadsheet, but we'll get back to it shortly. Stats clone managed to calculate all these by hand using something called a binomial coefficient. At least that's the fancy mathematical name for them. I prefer to call them combinations. There is a formula for it chock full of factorials, but we're not gonna use it. There are only six dice, and each of those dice can only be in one of six states. The input numbers are small. It's gonna be easier just to use Pascal's triangle. Each number in this triangle is the sum of the two numbers above it. If we go down six rows, we'll have all the numbers we could possibly need for this video. In bracket form, the terms would all look like this. It lets you see the pattern, but it doesn't actually show you the answers. So we'll just write the triangle with the answers and color code for reference. The total number you're choosing from is the row. The number you're choosing is the colored diagonal. The combination of four choose one can be found here. The combination of six choose three can be found here. Easy peasy. Now, usually combinations like this are explained using playing cards rather than dice because playing cards are simpler. This card is a five of hearts, and that's all it'll ever be. If you wanna choose a hand of five cards from a deck of 52, all you need is one combination to figure out how many possible ways that can happen. 52, choose five. Dice, like you'd find in the game of Farkle, are more complicated. Each one of them can be in one of six possible states. That means we're not only choosing dice, we're also choosing numbers on those dice. We can still use combinations, but we're gonna need more than one because we're making more than one choice. Say we wanted to know the number of ways we could roll a single one on two dice. First, we choose one die from two dice. Then we choose one number from four possible numbers. It can't be a five because five scores all by itself. That's a different role. Anyway, we're choosing one number out of four possible numbers. It's a separate combination. Multiplying them together, you get two times four equals eight, which is exactly what we got with the Python code. But say we wanted to know the number of ways you could roll a one on three dice. We choose one die out of three dice, then one number out of four numbers, then another number out of four numbers. 3 times 4 times 4 equals 48, which matches Python. The game of Farkle doesn't start with 2 dice or 3 dice, though. It starts with 6. We need to be really careful with the combination rules if we have that many dice. Rule number 1. Any dice you choose must get dice combinations. That includes specific dice that are chosen and dice that are grouped. Unknown, ungrouped dice don't need a dice combination because you're not choosing them. You're leaving them be. Rule number two, any dice that are unknown must get number combinations. Groups of unknown dice only need one number combination for the whole group. Keep these rules in mind as we try six dice. How about rolling a four of a kind with a pair? That's a dice combo for the four of a kind, a dice combo for the pair, 
a number combo for the four of a kind, and a number combo for the pair. Next, we grab all the values we need from Pascal's triangle. Yep, all four of them are there. Then we get 15 times one times six times five equals 450. Okay, okay, well, let's try something a little trickier. Like two triplets. Just like last time, you'll need two dice combos and two number combos, which gives us 600. Wait, th that's not right. My Python code and the spreadsheet both say 300. Oh, I see what happened. We actually only need one number combo for both groups of dice. See, when you have two groups of the same size, you don't know which one is which. Which means if you do a number combo for each of them, you're gonna overcount. I'll just add this into a rules list so we don't make this mistake again. Okay, how about three pairs? You'll need three dice combos and one number combo. That gives us 1800, which matches what we got before. Whew, okay. I think we've seen enough of those. Back to the spreadsheet. All right, so we've got the list of all possible scoring rolls, the number of points they're officially worth, and the number of ways they occur. Divide the number of ways a specific roll can occur by the total number of possible rolls, and you've got yourself a probability. First of all, the one through six straight is way more common than six of a kind, like by a lot. So the evidence I based this video on was completely anecdotal, which is good to know, I guess. But overall, there still doesn't appear to be any correlation between probability and score. That's easy enough to fix though, just add some more columns. To keep things simple, we won't do anything special with plus ones or plus fives on larger rolls. By that, I just mean that like a, a triple two with a single five will just be whatever the triple two is worth plus whatever the five is worth. Nothing special because you rolled them together. Speaking of triplets, for consistency, they should all be worth the same number of points because they're all equally likely. As far as I'm concerned, it makes the most sense to define the lowest possible scoring roll and then scale everything up from there. In normal Farkle, a roll of five is worth 50 points. Let's leave that one alone. A roll of one is just as likely as a roll of five, so it should also be worth 50 points. The rest of the rolls can just be a ratio of values from the probability column. Copy that up for all the rolls and whoa, whoa, whoa. Six of a kind is way too big. Let's bring that down a little with a square root. Yeah, yeah, that, that looks better. Copy that down for all the rolls and bingo bango. Although th these aren't the prettiest numbers in the world. So I think we can take some liberties and round a little. Yeah, there we go, much better. You're gonna play it now, right? Sure, I, I suppose that's a good idea. Okay, that was actually pretty boring. Here are some things we realized while we were playing. By using the six dice roll to scale out the points, I, I hadn't taken into consideration how often a roll comes up during your entire turn. Rolls like six of a kind in a straight can only happen on your first roll, whereas you get several chances to get triplets on your later gamble rolls. But I, I don't think that would have made the game more interesting. Scaling the points by probability made all of the scores hover around a few hundred points. There wasn't a lot of variation. The high scoring rolls are extremely rare. We actually scored the game the traditional way too, just for comparison. Notice the difference? It might be more obvious if I show you the running totals graph instead. Without one of those rare high scoring rolls, there's very little chance of an unexpected comeback. If someone gets behind at the beginning, they're likely to stay behind the entire game. In the end, M's win margin using my scoring was proportional to the traditional scoring. It just wasn't as fun to play. So as it turns out, Farkle already has good scoring rules, even if they're not statistically accurate. Honestly, it already has good scoring because it's not statistically accurate. So which scoring would you like to use? Mine or the traditional? Also, is it still Farkle if we use different scoring? Discuss. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. A special thanks goes out to supporters like Josiah Gleaton, Glenn Northrup, and ProDan, who provide the stability that helps make the show possible. Whether you support on Patreon or a YouTube membership, you are appreciated. Thank you for making it possible for this to be my job.
Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. Want to learn something new this year? Then check out Brilliant. It's a website and app that makes learning interactive, accessible, and fun. I'd recommend starting with probability fundamentals, where you can get used to counting outcomes before you move on to the harder stuff. They even have a course called Programming with Python, if that's what attracted you to my video. With over 60 courses to choose from, there's something for everyone. These courses are laid out like a story and broken into pieces, so you can tackle them one bit at a time. If you really want to learn something and have it stick, then you need practice. Does this sound like a service you'd like to use? If so, go to brilliant.org slash science asylum so they know you heard about them from me. They're also offering the first 200 of you 20% off an annual subscription. If Earth ended up inside the sun, there would be drag on it and its orbit would decay. Well, yes, that's technically true, but the density of the sun is already extremely low let alone when it expands into a red giant. The Earth will vaporize long before that drag can do anything significant to its orbit. Anyway, thanks for watching.